small bottom-dwelling fish like darters and sculpins are common in the headwaters where they feed on bottom-dwelling aquatic invertebrates. Downstream near the mouths of rivers, a greater diversity of fishes results from an increased variety of habitats. Fishes in these rivers may feed on animals growing in the water column called plankton. They may feed on insects, crayfish, and worms produced on the river bottom. Or they may prey on small minnows that swim and hide in the aquatic plants located along river margins or in the floodplain. Aquatic habitat is much more than just water in a stream. It is a complex of water depth, clarity, velocity, volume, temperature, chemistry, stream bottom, cover, sunlight, especially for algae, and organic material. Habitat is further influenced by the dynamics of these factors and results from local and upstream activities. Some aquatic species have strict habitat requirements and cannot tolerate much change. Streams provide habitat for more than aquatic animals. Wood ducks, bald eagles, and numerous fur bearers depend on our streams for food, nesting, and fun. The main energy source of aquatic life in warm water streams is leaf litter from trees along their stream banks. Each fall, leaves provide coarse organic materials, the food base for plant-eating aquatic insects such as stoneflies. As water temperatures cool and stream flows decrease in the fall, so do the activities of stream-dwelling animals as the stream community prepares itself for the onset of winter. Winter is a resting time for stream-dwelling animals as their activity is reduced to a minimum. Although during winter fish are not as active as in warmer seasons, biological activity continues as reproductive organs develop in preparation for the approaching spawning season. Spring, with its longer days and warmer temperatures, signals the beginning of renewed life in the stream. Leaves that fell into the streams during the previous fall are rapidly decaying and their nutrients are being recycled through the food chain. Spring is the season when most warm water fish species reproduce. Warm water streams provide essential spawning and nursery habitat for both resident and migratory species. Resident sunfish species such as rock bass, smallmouth bass, bluegill, and long-ear sunfish are nest builders and dig circular depressions in the stream bottom into which the female deposits her eggs. The male then fertilizes the eggs and aggressively defends the nest until the eggs hatch. Migratory species such as American shad are anadromous living part of their life in the marine environment and migrating to fresh water to spawn. All anadromous species use streams as corridors for spawning migration. Upon reaching suitable freshwater habitat, the female American shad spawns by broadcasting her eggs in the current where the male fertilizes them. The fertilized eggs eventually settle to the stream bottom where they remain unattended until hatching. Young fish abound in warm water streams as spring turns into summer. Many of the minnow species continue to spawn. Warmer water temperatures of summer coincide with the period of growth and activity for stream fishes. Summer is also the most active season for other forms of stream creatures, including crayfish, snails, mayflies, and more. Mussels reproduce by attracting fish and then releasing baby mussels onto the fish which carry them away to develop and colonize in other areas of the stream.
many species of aquatic insects emerge from their aquatic homes and transform into winged, mature adults that mate and lay eggs back into the streams. Some forms of adult mayflies complete their life cycle in a matter of days, while dragonflies extend their adulthood to several weeks. Shoreline and shallow water vegetation flourish in warm summer weather and provides abundant habitat for aquatic invertebrates and small fishes. As autumn returns, the life cycle of our warm water stream ecosystems begin again, connecting the circle of life. We all value our streams for different reasons. For some it's for canoeing and kayaking, for others it's for fishing, and for others yet it's for the beautiful aesthetic values they provide. But regardless of the reason we value our streams, very few people recognize the true threats there are to our warm water resources. These threats are from dams, from water diversions, threats from improper agricultural practices and industrial uses, and also threats from urban sprawl, which is running rampant throughout the southeast. We must do something to make sure that they're here for the future generations. The threats to the future of these water resources and our heritage are real. These threats can be local or region-wide, but they all impact the health and future of our streams. Although part of our history, mining has affected our warm water streams. These spoils are often placed in headwater streams, completely burying the origin of watersheds. Acid drainage from deep and strip mines has ruined countless miles of streams. Acidic waters, which bleed from these spoils, run into streams and can kill aquatic life by turning the waters as acidic as vinegar. Other mined materials also impact streams. Sand and gravel, for example, are mined directly from streams, removing spawning substrates for fish, and habitat for insects. Increased erosion and sediment loading from upstream sand and gravel mining prevent aquatic life from thriving. In many ways, dams and hydroelectric projects have provided great benefits for natural resources. Hydroelectric dams created most of the South's major reservoirs. The benefits of these projects not only include flood control, electricity, and water supply, but also navigation, recreational boating, fishing, hunting, nature viewing, and aesthetics. Unfortunately, hydroelectric projects also have had numerous impacts on natural resources, especially our warm water streams. Thousands of miles of warm water streams have been altered due to dams changing the natural functions and diverse habitat of these valued resources. Creation of reservoirs has eliminated river habitat for several rare fish and mussel species. Dams alter stream flow by releasing water based on electric generation needs and not on the needs of fish or wildlife. Alterations to stream flow are often at their worst during drought conditions, the time when low water levels already stress natural resources. Diversion dams that shunt water from their natural course into other streams have numerous detrimental effects on stream ecosystems. Even small dams alter the way streams function. Small dams hinder downstream transport of organic materials and nutrients vital to aquatic life. They also restrict upstream fish migration to headwater spawning grounds. Anadromous fish have been blocked from thousands of miles of coastal rivers, reducing their numbers to mere remnants of historic populations. Dams can affect more than fish. Dam construction and operation have diminished populations of the rare Rocky Shoal spider lily, which depend on shoal habitats for their survival.